night for us, Doran. Big night for Jeff Hathorn. We're going to get into the Steelers possibly making a trade for a wide receiver with Jeff coming up in just a minute. Jeff brought to you by Gutter Helmet. Safeguard your gutters from spring showers with Gutter Helmet by Lednor Home Solutions. Jeff, good morning, buddy. How are you? Good morning, guys. How are you? We are good, man. Mm-hmm. We're going to be throwing out the first pitch tonight. You'll be on the call play-by-play, KDKA AM, as Pitt takes on West Virginia in the backyard base brawl. How about that? Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Now, who's throwing? I assume Doran's throwing since it's a Pitt home game. So that's what I thought. And then Doran has ceded it to me. He knows this is a lifelong dream. I don't know. Oh. If, I don't know if Pitt's going to allow me to do it, though, Jeff. I do have concerns about that. Hmm. I mean, they are giving a gift to the West Virginia head coach because it's, you know, he's retiring after the year. Maybe this is his second gift to allow you to pitch. And maybe it'll be his biggest regret. He'll see you pitch and think, <laughs> we could have had this guy. They could have. I still have eligibility left. He's going to skip it in, Jeff. No way. He's definitely skipping it in. There's no way if he throws from the rubber that he's making it across the plate. Of course I am. No. You are. You are going up to the top of the mound. I mean, there's no standing in front, is there? If they're going to let me do it, I would hope they would let me do it from the top of the mound. Yes. I mean, if you're yeah. going to let the West Virginia guy do it, I think you're hoping that there's there's a chance for some big-time embarrassment, Jeff, and the best chance for <laughs> that is to put me up as far away as possible. <laughs> but we're excited about the broadcast too, Jeff, so it'll yeah. be you, and then Susie Cool will be bouncing around the – the dugouts right and then she's also going to be doing color yeah it's going to be awesome i mean we're going to talk to head coach mike bell during the game and uh talk to one of the pit players and yeah she's going to be down there there might be some other people that show up for the game that she will go talk to during it so it's going to be it's going to be cool and listen for these there's a a ton of locals for pit and a couple for west virginia and to get to play at pnc park is pretty awesome for them yeah it's going to be a good time can't wait I can't wait either. I hope the weather holds up. It looks like it is. It looks like we're going to get the rain maybe a little bit before then, and things should clear up by game time. First pitch, what, 7 o'clock, Jeff? Yes. And then our first pitch is about 6.45. Yes. I'm nervous already. I can tell. Should I just catch? Just let me catch. All right, fine. I've backed out. (laughs) I've backed out already. What? All right, Doran, if if he catches, like, are you going to, like, fire one in? There's no doubt. Yeah, bring it. firing it in. If it's you, you got to bring it. Firing it. I say we do it like this. People are probably annoyed with as much as we've talked about it already. But here's what I would say. If they let me do it, I think I'd do it. If they tell me to go bleep myself because I'm a West Virginia dork, then you do it and you throw it as hard as you possibly can. Sounds good. All right, there we go. Callis has volunteered to go over to the Green Tree Fields after the show and and be my catcher for a little bit. Let me warm up the alarm. I'll put it on ice. ice. He's, yeah. really, he's really overthinking this. Look at him. He's all nervous. I am nervous. <laughs> all right. Jeff, the Steelers, uh, CT ESPN is reporting that a significant wide receiver deal <laughs> is about to go down. And then a guy that we actually trust, even though we probably should at this point trust AB, Brian McFadden says he's heard that the Steelers could be adding a significant playmaker. Have you heard anything on this? Would it make sense? Uh, what would make sense for a possible return going back the other way in a wide receiver deal? Yeah, I mean – Probably the worst thing I could say is uh, I I don't know what exactly that that he put up the uh, the, the Brian McFadden signal for, but I don't know what exactly he put up the Brian McFadden signal for. And we've been, I think we've all of us have been trying to figure out, okay, what is it? We know it's at first it's like, okay, Pat Pete's coming back. And it was, it's not that. Um, Then it's okay. Maybe it's a corner, some other playmaker. And then we know it's a wide receiver, but we don't know. Um, who it is. It depends on who it is as far as their um, compensation back. And who knows, it might be a free agent signing. So you, there'd be no compensation at all. So I guess we'll find out. CT ESPN. I will say this. Uh, at first, uh, you kind of watch that. And you're like, okay, what's AB? And there's actually some clever stuff on there. It's actually a pretty funny <laughs> account. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it is very funny, and clever is a word. I'll just point people to the AB account. I cannot describe this on the air. He wants Shannon Sharp 
to buy a medicine ball <laughs> with a certain <laughs> a certain appendage attached yes. to that. Yes. That's all yeah. we can say. Jeff, uh, what's what's a bigger need in your in your opinion? Uh, getting a number two quarter or a number two wide receiver? If the Steelers are are snooping around and they do have money to spend and they do have those two holes to fill, what is actually a, an immediate need and what is more important, receiver two or corner two? How about a two A player? I could do both. Uh, and what's Dion's kid both, up to? Right? I mean, I would like to have a number two receiver, especially a veteran in that room, someone that's done it, um, that's more consistent than the, than the two veterans, Watkins and Van Jefferson, that they signed. Um, but, yeah, corners, corners are nice at I know, I know they have a little bit of depth that is very young and, and Trice and obviously the sixth-round pick. So I... I would probably say at this point corner, um, but I want them both. Do you think their interest in Cam Sutton is real, Jeff, or were they just trying to check a box by talking to him? Uh, I I do think that they wanted to talk to him, and I did think do think that that did happen, and I do think it is a possibility. Um, ultimately, it's not going to come down to me. People say, oh, with well, Mike Tom, it's going to be what Art Rooney thinks. He'll look at it. He'll talk to him. He'll be a part of this. Does he feel like whatever happened allegedly, um, you know, where is it at? Is there an explanation? Is there not of the of the what was alleged, but why he ran away for a couple of weeks? I mean, that's what he's got to divulge. And then that is an art question. And then they'll go from there. But I do think the interest is real, but I don't anticipate anything imminent. I think they're going to take their time. Um, if they were to sign Cam Sutton back. Jeff, who was your favorite pick of the draft? Oh. You know, it seemed like every one I, I liked. I mean, Frazier, I think, is an immediate starter. He jumps right in. And then that highlight tape of McCormick came out. And it's like, let's go. I mean, that was that was pretty awesome. I mean, there's some... I like all the picks. I really do. I think there's there's value to, towards the end. I think Peyton Wilson has a chance to be a really unique linebacker in, in Steeler history. I can't imagine why he went last until 98. I mean, maybe that will prove out over time. Um, because I like the underdogs, I'm going to go with McCormick. And the fact that, you know, Omar Khan you know, came out and said, listen, we've got someone – who not by name, but James Daniels, who's got a contract and this guy might take your job, James. And I thought that was a pretty strong word. So I want to see this guy play. Jeff flipping over to the pirates just for a few minutes here. They can't hit right now. It's 50 runs in 19 games. That's 2.6 runs per game. That's just not going to do it. Jared Jones is two and three. We know how good he's been this year. They're wasting a ton of good starting pitching performances is it the low-hanging fruit? Is it too easy? Is it talk radio fodder to say, like, Andy Haynes, Derek Shelton, there seems to be this one-size-fits-all approach where these guys are routinely in two-strike counts, Jeff. I mean, do, do you think that's what's happening here? For some guys, I think a lot of times that O'Neill Cruz is in two-strike counts because he swings and misses to get to 0-2. I talked to John, I did the postgame show last night and talked to John Wayner. And he said, you know, we had, there was all this optimism coming out of spring training of like, you're going to get 20 home runs out of every position. I mean, look at the power on this team. And if they just had that, if there was that power bat, how it would be so transformative for this lineup. But they don't have it. I mean, look at it last night. It's Brian Hayes, Brian Reynolds, O'Neill Cruz. You kind of like that top three. I love Kutch. He's an all-time great. He's not a cleanup hitter at this point in his career. Uh, and, and then Sawinski's not hitting. Cruz isn't hitting, a, you know, in the three in yesterday's lineup. You're getting no power. There are no easy runs. I mean, the A's are like seventh in the in major leagues in home runs. They're worst in batting average, but at least they can get some easy runs. Yeah. Pirates can't get any easy runs, and I think all of this adds up. I, Yes, you can blame the coaches, and they have a part in this. But guys just aren't performing. I mean, Cruz and Sawinski, uh, they have to start driving the ball. And, and Telez has just been – he's just been a disaster at first base. 
He has. And they have Lamb in AAA who's been hitting well. They've got Nick Gonzalez who's hitting well. They've got g Bay. They've got Yasmani Grandal who's now caught six games. Do you, and, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and at what point do you pull the trigger if, if for nothing else just to bring a new body in there? Yeah. I realize it's AAA. It's not always the same. And I know with Lamb you have to make a roster move, so that's a little trickier. Uh, but, man, Gonzalez is on the 40-man. Bay's on the 40-man. Uh, Triolo's been okay. But not so much that you couldn't send him down and try something else. Yeah. Uh, and Triolo, he had a four-game hitting streak, but I think they're all four singles, so he's not he's not really driving the ball either. Yeah, you've got to stop the bleeding here, and you got to score some runs. So I would be up for any of those things. Jeff, we appreciate the time. We will see you tonight at PNC Park. Loosen up that arm. Let's mm -hmm. go, boys. Mm -hmm. This will be fun. Get Thanks, Jeff. Rotator cuff here. Thanks, See Jeff. Guys. It's our sports director, Jeff Hathorne. Good stuff on the Steelers and the Pirates. You can hear Jeff on the play-by-play -play call tonight for Pitt, West Virginia, the backyard base brawl at 7 p.m. on KDKA AM.